Hello and welcome to my annual favorites video. So this will be my favorites for 2022. So before I start, I want to obviously wish you a happy new year. Happy 2023. Um, 2022, as you know, <laughs> was not a great content year for me. Uh, I think I, I made like 10 videos the whole year and most of it was like at the end of the year. But I was using makeup throughout the year and some of these things are some new things and some of them are old things and I'm also going to share some miscellaneous things with you. So I put all my favorites partially for the thumbnail, but also because I really love this little cute tote. Um, but this is the Glossier Brooklyn Utility Tote. So they released this on a limited basis online very briefly, like around Black Friday sales. And uh, you can get this, but it's one of those merch items that you typically can only pick up if you actually go to the physical store location. So you can only get this at the Brooklyn uh, Glossier store but uh, like I said they released it in a very limited quantity online and I managed to pick one up so I thought it's so cute I actually have you been using it quite a bit um, so I put my favorites in here it has all of these little slots and it's just basically one open open tote um, it's actually not as large as you might think it is it's actually a really nice size so I still fit a lot of stuff in here so in this video I'm going to share uh, my beauty and non-beauty related things that I've been loving uh, just because I don't feel like I have enough to break it up into two videos and to be honest some of these products are I mean there's some new products and some older not older products but products that I have used for a while and that I've repurchased. So without further ado, let's start um, with the beauty things. For a base, I, you guys know I really love the Chantecaille Just Skin. I still use this. Um, I am currently using the shade Tan and I've been doing this thing where I don't put any foundation or tinted moisturizer or anything on my forehead. I basically just um, isolate it on like my under eyes and cheek area and then I put a concealer on. Um, so I have been using my base products really sparingly because I don't put it all over anymore. I just kind of target it in areas where I might have a little bit more discoloration or maybe some dark spots, which is really typically like my cheek area. So um, yeah, I, I bought this. I can't even remember when, if it was this year or technically the end of last year, but I feel like I've hardly put a dent in it and I actually use this maybe three times a week. I've also been really loving, and this is a new purchase for 2022, the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. Still really love the Fenty Soft Blur Skin Tint, I think it's what it's called. Um, but this is also really lovely. I'm wearing this one today. It just has like a really nice natural finish. It's really easy to blend. Um, it's a really good uh, skin tone match, and this is number 32N. And yeah, I've been really enjoying this. It wears really well throughout the day. It wears well under makeup. Um, so yeah, this is a really nice, it's it's nice if you like a, a lighter coverage base um, and it wears well throughout the day. For powder, I have to give a shout out to um, a product that I've had for, or I've been using for a while. And it's the Ambient Lighting powder in dim light and I'm not sure if you can tell but I have hit pan on this so that's really exciting and I've been using this um basically all over so all over the face under eye and it's just like a really nice soft uh soft light powder finishing powder it's not really so much a setting powder although I do use it as a setting powder like I said I only put product or the base on my cheek so this kind of just helps blend everything and make everything look cohesive on my face so for concealer, I have two here. So one is a new product that I just picked up uh, during the holiday sale. So I haven't really been using it for that long. And another one is I actually one I actually repurchased because I used my first jar of it up. So that one is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. And so I am the shade Ginger, which is medium two. I really, really love this concealer. I forgot how much I enjoyed using it. And I like this because it's so easy, at least for me, to like blend and apply. I never use a brush with this. I never feel like I have to. I don't use a beauty blender with this. I feel like the best way to apply this for me is just with my finger and it just helps like melt it under the skin. And it just gives like a really nice soft natural finish. So it's uh, very much like my skin. It's, it's 
it's matte, but it's not, it doesn't look drying under the skin. It is more matte, but it's not drying. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't make my under eyes feel dry. Um, it's just almost like the, the closest to like my natural skin finish. And then the other concealer I've been really loving is the, uh, Sep not Sephora, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. And this is a number eight medium. And this one comes with like a doe foot applicator. So this is definitely more, at least for me, a more of a luminous looking concealer. Like it's not um, shiny or anything under the eyes, but I would say this gives the skin under my eyes a little bit more brightness and it has nothing to do with the, the shade. It's definitely more of the finish. So it just has like a little bit more of a satin finish as opposed to a matte finish. I It's a toss up on a day when I would pick one over the other. I feel like this one I would choose if I had just a little bit more time because I usually use a beauty blender with this. So I obviously have to get a beauty blender. I have to wet it. I have to sponge it on. If I'm in a rush, I will use the soft matte uh, concealer because this is just, I dab a little bit on my finger and under my eyes and then I'm good to go. But both of them wear beautifully throughout the day and they do minimize my under eye circles, which are, are pretty prominent. <laughs> I haven't really been loyal to a single blush this year. I have just been using all of my blushes so I don't necessarily have a favorite but a bronzer I've been really loving and one that again I repurchased is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. So this is um, what is known as the Soleil Tan to Chanel. I, they kind of rebranded the name a little bit and they actually have added, I think two other shades now. So I think there's a shade lighter than this. This is the original shade and then there's a shade deeper than this, I'm pretty sure. So this is um, 392 Soleil Tan Medium Bronze. So I think there's a light and I think there's a deep. So this, as far as I know, is the original shade and I love it. Um, I think, I don't know if they reformulated it, but to me, it still looks really pretty on the skin. If anything, I feel like it's less orange than it used to be. I remember it looking a little bit orange if you applied a little bit too much. So that's what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. I also have a bit of blush over at a cream blush from Chantecaille, um, but I've been really loving this bronzer. And I picked this up kind of mid-year, so around June or July. And pretty much since then, if I wear bronzer, it's usually this. And I do like this because it pairs well with uh, cream blushes or powder blushes. I don't feel like you have to pick and choose what you wear when you wear this. And I just forgot how lovely it is. And sometimes I just wear it alone because it just gives your skin like a really beautiful, um, healthy bronze glow, which I like. In terms of eye things, I didn't buy... Actually, that's a lie. I did buy one new eyeshadow, which is the Chantecaille, no, the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Pillow Talk, which is beautiful. It's stunning. I still love that formulation of the Eyes to Mesmerize. And if I want a really pretty pinkish hue to my lids, I will gravitate towards that because it is very pretty. And it's also fairly long wearing. In terms of powder eyeshadows, I haven't bought any new ones this year, I'm pretty sure. If I did, it's probably one of these Glossier uh, monochromes, which I'm still really loving. It's what I'm wearing today. This is in the shade Teak, and it's just like a really pretty warm, kind of bronzy uh, brown tone. And it's really pretty. I love it. I love these formulations. I love how, you know, all the colors in each of these sets just like obviously go really well together. And you can even mix and match the certain sets together, but I just love how these are just kind of like a one-stop shop. So still really loving those. In terms of a base, I'm also still really loving the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Um, I just feel like it really helps the eyeshadow stick to my lids and last all day long, which is lovely. And then I have not strayed very far away from my glossy boy brow. Um, I do have the Anastasia, I can't remember what it's called. I bought it uh, earlier in the year, pretty sure. Um, but it's the clear brow gel, which I do actually really, really love. It's just a little bit cumbersome to apply when I'm rushing in the morning. So I find I only really wear it on the weekends if I have, or when I have a little bit more extra time to put on my makeup. But I really do love that. And I also really love the dip brow. So lately, 
um, when I go get my brows done, um, I will often not get a tint because I find that the dip brow is like the tint for me and I don't feel like the tint really lasts that long anyway. So I just really have them clean it up and I just skip the tint um, because I have the dip brow pomade. For mascara, you know, I really still love my, my favorite mascara is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. Um, but I found a new one from Tower 28, which is really simple. I just don't feel like it adds as much um, like length, I guess, or definition, um, but it is really nice and I probably, you know, going forward, I, I wouldn't mind just repurchasing the Tower 28 mascara um, and it does, uh, length is what I'm wearing today, obviously, but it does lengthen my lashes a bit. You guys know my lashes are pretty straight, they're pretty sparse, so if you can see my lashes, at all right now it's because of this mascara and uh, I feel like it, it lasts all day long it doesn't smudge and does give me raccoon eyes um, so I have been really enjoying this it does have a little bit of that um, kind of like fiber technology I guess um, this is very similar actually to the Glossier uh, lash slick which I still use I actually use it usually on my bottom lashes because I've been using this or the hourglass on my top lashes um, but it, it's very similar to that formulation um, you know the way your lashes look with that mascara but I think this is just like a little step up so this is if it was a range it would be the Glossier Lash Slick you know over here the hourglass over here and then the Tower 28 is like right in the middle 2022 was apparently the year I rediscovered lip products because in Canada at least um, mask ma mandates were lifted around April in 2022 and um, while I still wear it occasionally because there are still some instances where I need to wear it um, but for the most part you know I don't have to wear a mask anymore especially in the workplace so I have just been like getting back into the love of lip products because I, I basically went two years without wearing anything but a lip balm just because with the mask it gets really messy so last year was the year I discovered this lip product from Chanel which I still don't know the full name of it's La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Gloss and um, this one happens to be in soft rose I have uh, I didn't get any new shades last year um, but I, I really still love this and I still use it on you know days where I want like a longer wearing lip or I'm looking for a specific look so if I did have to wear a mask I would wear these because they don't budge but in 2022 I discovered quite a few other lip products so one of them is the reformulated Dior Addict Extreme so this was discontinued and they brought them back and they brought them back in tons of different colors I repurchased one color that I had in a in the previous or the original formulation or release which was Lucky which is like kind of a bright poppy red look I also got two other shades so one is fauve which is kind of more of like I guess an everyday color it's kind of like a brownie peach shade um, it's uh, slightly deeper than the other shade I was really enjoying from the original launch which was called uh, silhouette I think and then the other color I really love which is like right up my alley you guys know I love these like kind of berry rose colors but it's called Dior mania which is also really really pretty and I love the formulation of these I mean they're glossy they're not super long wearing but they're so easy to reapply. I also fell in love in the later half of the year with these rare beauty um, bombs. There's a full name for them. I can't remember what it is, but I have three here. My favorite probably is nearly neutral because it's like the most neutral. That's what I'm wearing today right now. Um, so it's kind of like a my lips better, but maybe a little more brown. Um, I also really love these other colors that I picked up, which are nearly rose and nearly berry and I just love these because they are like a really glossy look but they feel so so comfortable on the lips okay Chloe's going to um, be our special guest here in the background for the last little bit um, so I also got uh, two lip products from Glossier so one is the generation G and one is the ultra lip so the the generation G they came out with a couple of different shades um, so the generation G is like a matte lip stain so this is fuzz and this is kind of uh, kind of like a brown shade. I wouldn't say it's like a My Lips But Better shade. It's it's a little bit warmer, I think, than Leo, if I'm remembering it correctly, but I really enjoyed that. And then I got this limited edition um, lip product from the Olivia Rodrigo collection, which is called Pisces. Um, and this is really pretty. So it's actually very similar to 
um, fuzz, but it's in the ultra lip um, formulation. So you can see um, this one is fuzz. This one is Pisces. And, you know, it's slightly different. Like they're a really similar tone, but one is like matte and one is glossy. So they're really pretty. I like that color. Do you like that color? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hold it? Okay, so those were all of the lip products that I've been really loving this past year. And yeah, like I said, it was just like the year that I rediscovered lip products and I still have to upload my 2022, which is technically gonna be my 2023 uh, decluttering video because I actually did declutter quite a few lip products. So even though it feels like I picked up quite a few, I actually got rid of quite a few also. I don't have really that many more products to share with you. Um, one is a hair care product, which is the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors HA for your scalp. So for a while, my scalp was getting really, really dry and I was getting dandruff. And it wasn't like so dry where I could like see patches, but I feel like if I shook my hair, or I brushed my hair. If I was wearing a black shirt, it would just you know, sprinkle on my shirt. So I've been using this um, pretty regularly. So I don't use it like right after I wash my hair. I usually wait like maybe the next day and I put it on in the evenings. Um, and then I do that consecutively until it's a hair wash day. But yeah, I really like this. I, just, I feel like it did really help with the dryness of my scalp. And also it's great because I didn't feel like it weighed my hair down or made it greasier than it should have been. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed this and it's quite inexpensive. I didn't even realize that they came out with this. I was just happened to be at Sephora perusing it. So I picked that up. It comes in like, it has a, like a little pop pop. It does have like a little pipette and it's a very like milky consistency. So it's really easy to apply and I don't feel like I needed to use a lot of it to get the results that I wanted. Now we're moving on to like miscellaneous things. So um, this is the PMD Rose Quartz facial cleanser, facial massager, I can't remember. So this has the bristles on the one side to like clean your face, very similar to kind of like the Foreo, um, but this one also has this rose quartz on the back, which actually heats up. So when I'm doing my nighttime skincare routine and I want to like heat activate um, certain serums, I guess, I will use the back of this. So it warms up, it just, it's not uncomfortable, it's actually quite nice and uh, it feels really nice on your skin and you can just put it all over. So I've been really enjoying Enjoying that. Um, honestly, I probably use the rose quartz side more than I use the cleansing feature side, but I still quite enjoy both sides, I guess. Another thing I've been really loving this past year is reading. So I have gotten back into reading books and I think I really should have gotten a, an e-reader a lot sooner because I feel like I would have read books more, you know, consistently. I just find hardcover books, while it's really satisfying to flip the pages and, you know, it's really pretty on your bookshelf, it's like really cumbersome to bring along with you. Um, I never know when I really have downtime to read, so it's really more beneficial for me to have a sort of an ebook to bring around with me. So this is actually my second Kobo this year because I originally had the Kobo Clara and I bought it at the very beginning of 2022 and I loved it. It actually broke. I... I don't even know what happened to it, but it was like a few months after I got it, it broke and uh, Kobo was great. They sent me a new replacement one. Um, but when I didn't have that e-reader for I think three or four weeks, I was just kind of looking online and I was looking at the other Kobos because I kind of bought the, the entry level one because I wasn't sure how much use I was going to get out of it. So I just bought the cheapest one. Um, but then once I was like starting to use it more and I actually, you know, really fell in love with it, I decided, you know what? I feel like I should have just gone for the, like a higher model. Um, so this one is the Kobo Libra. So if you're familiar with the Kobos and the reason I picked Kobo over the Kindle is just because in Canada, uh, Kobo works just a little bit better, I guess, than the Kindle. Um, although, you know, if you have a Kindle, I'm sure you know it has a lot, maybe better features, I guess. And also it works with Amazon, so there's that benefit. Um, but I haven't had any issues with like finding books, um, downloading books with the Kobo. And I usually just download it directly from like the Kobo website. Anyway, the Libra has buttons. The Clara only had basically the power button and then everything else was like done on the screen. This one has like tactile buttons, which I actually really love. Um, so you can see how there's like a little bit more 
I guess, border on this side. So when you're holding it, you can hold it really comfortably in your hand. Um, and uh, the power button is on the back, which I really love. The Clara, the power button was like right here on the very center bottom. So I just feel like when I was holding it like this, I often was like pressing it and then it would go to sleep. Or sometimes if I press it too long, it would totally shut off. So I feel like this is just like more ergonomic. Um, technically, you can hold more books on this, I think. I think it's like a 32 gigabyte storage, which... I probably will never reach that. It's not like eBooks, are, the size is that large. Um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying this. And I also love that this is USB-C to charge. The other one, Clara, was USB or micro USB. And it's like, I've pretty much fully migrated to USB-C. Um, so I have more chargers for a USB-C than I do for um, a micro USB. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. And I think I ended 2022 with like, 75 books that I read which is probably 70 more than the previous year so I really really have been loving the Kobo or just the e-reader in general because it's so convenient whenever I have downtime whether I'm like you know, on the train somewhere or like, you know, I'm a passenger in a vehicle or if I'm wor at work and I'm, you know, taking a break at lunch or something. Also at night. Um, so if I was reading like a physical book, I'd always, always have to have obviously a light on, but this one I can kind of like read on the covers and I don't bother the bow. Um, so yeah, I really love e-readers. It's like one of my best purchases. Um, and if you are thinking of getting a Kobo, I would suggest maybe just springing the extra like 80-ish dollars for the Libra, which I think is like the second tier up because the functionality on it is is better. Um, I did give my Clara to my mom. She doesn't read ebooks nearly as much as I do, um, but just so that, you know, it wouldn't go to waste. Another tech sort of favorite would be my iPhone 14 Pro. So I think the last time we talked about phones, I was on the 12 Pro Max, which was in the blue shade. I can't remember what it's called, Sierra Blue maybe? But since then, this is actually my second new phone. So I had given the 12 Pro Max to the bow and I got the 13 Pro Max. And sometime this year, Chloe, who's right there, um, she had dropped the Bose phone and it shattered the whole back glass and so he needed a new phone so then he took the 13 Pro Max and then I took or I got the 14 Pro so I downgraded in size because I just found that the fort or the max size was just too big like it rarely fit in pockets um I have like a little Chanel mini and the 14 Pro technically did fit in there but those are pretty much the only thing you could fit in there. Whereas this one fits perfectly. I will say you sacrifice battery life, which is a big bummer because the battery life on this really, really sucks, especially if you're a heavy user, I guess. So I, that is one thing that I, is noticeably different, but everything else about this phone I love. I love the size. I love the always on display now that they have sort of fixed it and it can just go like completely dark like an Android. And yeah, I've just been really enjoying this. It takes great photos, great videos. Um, a lot of my Vlogmas footage this last year, 2022, was actually taken on the iPhone. So really enjoying that phone so far. So the last thing I want to share is this, I think it's called the mini moon bag from Uniqlo. I'm sure you've seen this before because it's very, very popular. I got, I think this color is orange. They have come out with lots of new colors for spring, I believe, but they have like your regular neutrals like black and brown and, and cream color. Um, but this is great. So last year, I mean, I'm still really obsessed with the Lululemon everywhere belt bag but this year especially the later half of the year it's been so difficult to find one like I wanted to gift one to my mom um, she already had one but I wanted to gift her a black color and it was just like months and months and months before they re-released or restocked their everywhere belt bag so I pivoted to this bag uh, although I do still really love the Ever everywhere belt bag this does carry a lot more and it's just like a really cute shape um, I do feel like it's a little bit obviously bulkier than the everywhere belt bag from Lululemon but it's really great it's lightweight on its own it doesn't necessarily have any like um, you know bulky hardware or anything like that it has an adjustable strap um, and it's just like very cute and soft and it's perfect it's easy to wipe down and clean and uh, it's like a really great on the go so if you can't find the everywhere belt bag or if you want to spend less money because this was only like $25 
um, I would recommend this. And you can get it from Uniqlo online or in the store. I like your makeup. You do? Do you like makeup, Chloe? Yeah. Yeah. And nail polish. And nail polish. Do you want some nail polish on your fingers? Yeah. Or toes? Hmm? What do you feel like for lunch oh, today? I will not suck my thumb. You will not suck your thumb because you're not supposed to suck your thumb when you have nail polish on, right? I can I? Can you put nail polish on my feet? Yes. Okay, so that is it. Those were my favorites for 2022. I feel like I've forgotten some things, but our special guest, as you can see, has moved to the forefront because she just couldn't resist being part of uh, today's video. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Again, happy, happy new year. Thank you so much for continuing to watch the channel hopefully this year i um produce a little bit more content i'll be obviously going on mat leave <laughs> soon um not soon but in a few months so um once that's sort of settled down i'll have a lot of free time i use free time very loosely but i i suspect there'll be um a little bit more time for for content making so uh, hopefully you'll see more of me this year and I want to thank you so much for your support this past year. I hope you had a wonderful 2022 and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Can you say bye? Bye.